So first, I would like to welcome you all, HR people, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, students, ex-students of mine, <laughs> uh, many uh, colleagues, uh, so uh, very happy to see you all. And uh, today, we're very happy to host uh, Abdelaziz Arumi, who's coming from Kuwait, to meet you. So for those who don't know me, my name is Randa Farah, and I'm the founder of I Have Learned Academy, which is a place where we share everything that you did not learn at school or university. So you know there are so many things that we had to learn the hard way, and uh, also leading in the digital era is something that no one really taught us. So we will uh, have uh, today a nice discussion with Abdelaziz. And please don't leave after the presentation because we'll have a nice brunch uh, and networking here in the back and in, on the balcony, okay? So if you have uh, any questions, so at the end, like Abdelaziz will tell you if he will take your questions in the moment or at the end. And uh, we would love also to hear your feedback at the end, so I you will receive also an email with a survey and everything so that we hear your feedback and the other topics that you would like to uh, have from us. So to introduce uh, Abdelaziz, Abdelaziz is a best-selling author, executive coach, and HR leader. He worked in leading organizations in the Middle East with more than 18 years of experience in different industries and different countries. So Abdelaziz did a very interesting book that I had the chance to, to start reading. <laughs> I, cannot, I did not finish it yet, okay. but he will tell you more about it now. So without uh, staying longer, I would like to give the floor to Abdelaziz Arumi. Thank you, Rafi. Hey, yeah, no, Klein, thank you. I had food for breakfast, but I need help. Okay, so uh, I'm honored to be here. L L Lebanon for Kuwait is the second home. My last name is Al Rumi. I like to think that I'm a cousin to Majd Al Rumi. I know we look the same, I know not, but we definitely don't sound the same. So um, thank you for being here. Again, I'm not going to introduce myself. Uh, I don't like to really talk about my experience because I know there are people that have more experience, more interesting stuff that they did. And the real heroes are not sitting behind the desk. They're actually people are at home. They're making a difference in people's lives. So this session is for you. Make it yours by you know all the possible engagement questions that you have. Just for the you know uh, considering the time limitation and optimizing you know all your time. Um, we will keep the questions at the very end, if you may. However, uh, please, if there are any things that wasn't clear, just ask me to clarify further. This uh, will be relevant to most of us. This is uh, the, actually the, the main, the main uh, idea that I had in mind. And I apologize again to keeping you here while we should be outside enjoying this good weather. All right, so today we're going to talk about a few things. Talking about the new normal, we all know what that means but we're trying to build a common ground among us and understand how this presentation and how this discussion can help us, especially in your business and your life. Then defining what is the new people management, what is the new business model, and how we can build a case for change. So, with a good start, please use the QR code. You'll see a list of Challenges, vote for the top three, if you may, challenges. There is no limitation, so that we know what to tackle mainly in this session. Carol, how we will check the, the answers? Right there. Okay, I can see most of you are entrepreneurs, I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah. There is still room. It's, it keeps changing, so yeah. Yeah, it's still number one, huh? Last call. I think we will close here. Okay. So, you can add your answers, which wouldn't be a problem. Let's go one by one before we go to, to this, Carol. 
let's check the answers. So most of you feel that the challenge we have is hybrid, flexible, you know, working system or working style, employee experience. Thank God, alhamdulillah, we have it. Okay, because this is really important. Moving from big data to smart data, we're going to touch base on all of this, inshallah, as we go. Uh, the workplace or work culture, okay, uh, absenteeism. I'm disappointed that this was lost, honestly. Okay, but it's okay. Well, I'm going to tell you why at the very end of the session if you're still here. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the next one. Yeah, shukran. So Carol is an amazing person. He makes me look, she makes me look good. So be nice to her, please. Yes, Alhain, to make it more exciting, either you can talk to your neighbor or you do it you know, uh, solely. What are the three to four things that change for better and then the three to four things that change for worse? I'm going to ask for a few people to participate in that to be able to help them more. I'm giving also some examples on what is good and bad. Take your time. For example, uh, flexible working hours it was something that we had. But then too many Zoom calls. That is a bit frustrating with the connection, with everything, with the kids. Huh? Work-life balance. Work balance, Mumtaz. OK, you want to shut it out. So what was good? Is it good or, or bad, the work-life balance? The good, excellent. Great. What is, an, uh, what is another thing that was good from what happened? Adaptable. Adaptable? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, excellent. Yes, totally. Mm. Yes. And what were the, the bad things that happened? Too much work? Too much work? Too much information, right? Tell them. Live interactions. Okay. Oh, can you elaborate more? Okay. Yes. Right. Totally agree. May I know? Uh, what are the industries we're talking about here? So I know people from consulting, education, higher education. I'm going to write it in short, so education. What else? Technology. Marketing. Digital. Travel, OK. Pardon? Software development, Mumtaz. OK. Construction? Ya yeah, Salam. FMB. Retail. Ahla wa sahla. Healthcare. Ya yeah, Salam. IT. What else? Insurance? I won't uh, be able to understand my handwriting, so it won't matter. The good thing that we can relate to all of this, me personally, and that we're going to address this. Because thanks to COVID, everything is good with COVID for me. Everything was good. Although I lost my job, I had some challenges uh, during COVID. But it, it, it helped me personally to realize my priorities. What really matters, what doesn't matter. Right, the title, people, and, and, and you know, maybe you, you, you checked in, in, on LinkedIn how people were proud to say that they had to, 
you know, quit the job or they were pushed to leave the job and they're, you know, refinding themselves to do something better. Connecting with the, a keyword. It's a trend now. It starts with the P. Ya salam. Your purpose? Free coaching session. Five minutes only. Okay, great, great. It's all exciting. I know that we can all relate to this. And let's go deep into what we can do about it. People think, all of us, okay? So I'm an IT guy who moved to HR, into leadership, have my own business, went, worked in most of these industries except uh, the insurance the, and the healthcare. I did most of this, either consulting, owning, or actually working in those organizations. People feel that they had a problem with engagement, trust, and everything, صح? Okay. Innovation. It, it was, you know, hit really hard. Why? Because we need to streamline things. C coming up with new products. Performance. People need to understand how they're performing. Okay? All of a sudden, they're not in front of us. And guess what? I don't think we really learned from that experience. We want people to act like they used to be. Leadership, new styles of leadership and everything. Last but not least is managing a crisis. HR is responsible for managing crisis. All of a sudden, we're not important. We are a support department. And now we are on the front line of managing the crisis. It's not the operations, it's not the sales, it's not anyone else, it's us. So let's capitalize on this opportunity and since 2019, more and more CHROs are becoming CEOs. So before it was the sales, then it moved to CFOs, and that's it's our time. Although these two cases were ladies, but so what, they're our colleagues. So let's help our ladies. Okay. If I want to summarize all the challenges that we have, it's all about productivity. Why? Why I, I care about work-life balance? So that I can produce. Why I care about performance? So that I can produce. Because if I'm working hard, but I'm not producing anything or not adding value, that's a dilemma. A trust to get things done. And so on and so forth. Your dear friend, new friend, Kuwaiti friend, Abdelaziz Zarumi, summarized the concept of working harder, or uh, sorry, smarter, and productivity. They come hand in hand. So, positive engagement. Now, the difference between engagement that I'm doing, but I'm thinking to apply for somewhere else, right? The, the manager see, sees you busy, you drop everything, all your life commitment, family commitment to do the work for a boss who doesn't care, okay? And this is our problem, by the way, individually. We give them the right to do that to us. Contribute to innovation. So innovation, basically, either we're coming up with something new, or streamlining the process. Okay? I know mo most of you have uh, any more experience than me, so I'm not trying to be so smart. I'm trying to be simple to make things uh, uh, really meaningful. With measurable results. So it's not any results. It needs to be measurable. It needs to be clear, whether you want to call it a smart or what have you. And makes an impact. Impact equals outcome. Okay? If I, del I delivered what you want, but customers are not happy. If that was the deal, then it's okay. But we decided to improve something else, and I screwed up while delivering that result. That means I didn't really do what matters. So it's a bit complex. The keyword, okay, I'm tricking you a bit. I'm putting a bold in some areas, but I'm looking for somewhere else. Perceived. If we can move or change the word from perceived to measurable, 50% of our problems will be, that, at least as HR. Because we are more of a subjective department. Besides payroll, which you cannot get 100% every time, we're a subjective department. And I'm leadership, I do leadership, I do talent acquisition, I do everything. I say to my manager, I did an excellent job. I headhunted this person with the best budget, the best package, whatever. They wouldn't care. They said, I brought him. It's something, you know, it's more like religion. You know, everyone can talk about religion. It's all about uh, thinking positively or psychology. Everyone thinks that they can talk about it. But it's not hard like finance or technology. Right? So don't give you enough credit. So we, we don't allow them to do this. 
we push them back for measurable results, measurable outcome that is perceived valuable by the stakeholders, whoever the stakeholder is. With all due respect, if we don't get the earn and respect and influence our stakeholders, our colleagues within HR, within other areas, definitely we cannot be as influential for our external customers. I'm a certified stakeholder center coach. I believe everything we do reflects into our stakeholders. It is the patent of Dr. Marshall Goldsmith, the number one leadership coach, who wrote a, a foreword for me in the book because I understand the concept of the stakeholder. This is key. Again, perception is reality. Their perception is your re reality. Now, I'm not talking to you as HR. I'm talking to you also as leaders. And leadership is a choice, as you know. So we earn the respect that we desire. All right. So again, productivity. With positive engagement, let's summarize it. Positive engagement means a, a, a workplace is purpose-driven, like the keyword you just mentioned. Purpose. Sorry. Okay. So what does purpose mean? If anyone can just help me out with this. The goal, Mumtaz. What else? Yes, yeah, salam. Okay, why of what? The why of what? Okay, excellent. Excellent. Yes, help me out. Thank you. The why of the organization, the why of the person coming up together, right? Both of them. Excellent. Innovation. More value, less resources. This is my description, my definition. Please challenge it. Last but not least, all these come together. I cannot say this comes last or this comes first. They all come together. Either making change. So this is value. Output. Profits. Or someone's satisfaction. It can be the boss satisfaction. It can be the employee satisfaction. Any satisfaction will show that we have moved the needle a bit. Dilu, satisfaction, this is what goes without saying. So, satisfaction outcome results altogether. However, leading the digital era, big talk, everyone comes here, technology and everything. But nothing has changed since the introduction of PCs. They are the same, they're a different flat screen, صح? keyboard, keyboard, mouse, mouse, tree, no tree, <laughs> okay? It's the same, but we moved in the digital era. However, at our homes, our restaurants, in our life, we are more digital, AI, Connected, we're different, we're smart. The, w w what's wrong? What's happening? Pardon? Mentality. But it's not only in Lebanon or in Kuwait. The whole world. Right? We're not giving fair focus and development in the workplace. We are maybe being too ignorant or too selfish to really contribute to the place that makes a living. The place that has purpose, if we say. The place that makes us rich, makes us advance, help us help the community, shape the community. But in reality, it is not. So we're all blamed <laughs> for it. So I know some, some, yani some workers we have in the org organization, they say, they don't know how to use iPhone. They cannot do the performance management by a system. Or digital. Yeah, well, he has Samsung. And he's doing well, money transfer. And he's doing everything. And he uses WhatsApp, similar to you. And he has meetings with his family through WhatsApp and Zoom. So they are smart. But because we are downgrading people, we think are authoritative, whether we are HR or whether we are managers. <sighs> Even back to the future, the movie, people from my age, you know, age of 16 and above, all right? Now I'm 43. So 
even in the, that movie, in all the movies, they say either Terminators, robots, killing everyone, okay, or we, we use transportation in a different way, but not, nobody talks about or nobody visioned or envisioned the way we're going to work in the digital world. So there is big room of change. And today we have this opportunity to change our mindset in order to influence the people to adapt that digital mindset. Another quotation by your new friend. <laughs> so working uh, uh, smarter, productivity, and the digital age, age is having the right people. So I will pause a bit. What we can say about the right people? Because I hear this with Simon Sinek, the one I adore, and a lot of you know gurus. But when it comes to reality, they come to me, we need to hire the right people. What do you mean by the right people? Yeah. What about the left people? Productive. Productive. Experience. Experience. Yes, salam. Committed. I'm not going to say anyone who's wrong. Please, يعني, be, be engaged. Today is Friday. Yes, salam. Yes, What's your name? Caroline. 10 minutes coaching. But you coach me, I won't coach you. Okay, I'm not going to be fishing anymore. I shouldn't do that. So, so competencies, yes, yes. Do you mind if I elaborate more on the competencies? Yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, so basically, the way I see it is now I'm developing, this is the fifth time I'm doing a competency model for my organization. I did it in, in different, different organizations. And that's a mistake that I did, that I'm acting as a consultant, because I'm also a consultant. And I'm working now at the, the most Islamic digital bank, and it's located in Kuwait, Bobian Bank. Um, we moved from being around the 60 ranked to 16 in 10 years only. And inshallah, the next five years will be to top five. However, because of the digital innovation that we have. And uh, the reason I came up with, with and, and adapting uh, the competency, which they never heard. Why? Because most of the companies I go through, except Equate, one of the, uh, the second largest player in uh, ethylene glycol in the world, uh, Equate, um, they really actually developed me into uh, and educate me about the competency uh, model. A and basically, what I did is simple. Uh, we worked with the RBL group. They are the founders, you know, the, the father is Dave Ulrich, the founder, uh, the, the, the father of uh, modern HR. And what they do is they connect what people should do from leadership, soft skills, and technical. And they merge it with the company values and strategy. Values are driven from uh, uh, vision and mission or vice versa. Okay, and bring everything together to get the person who can deliver the job, but a best fit to the organization. So someone, like for example, Amazon, highly digital company. Different work experience than Apple. Different work experience than uh, Microsoft, which is more of office setup. And different than, I'm sure, Samsung. So they're all technical, all digital, but they act way different because of the culture, because of the value. One, uh, one is the most uh, customer-centric, the other one is more about innovation, and so on and so forth. That makes a difference. Tools, we have the tools. I know most of us, you know, either selling tools or be exposed to tools, engagement tools, or what have you. Accessibility, does everyone have accessibility to do the work? Okay, and contribute, and do things digitally. In time, so it's more of a cloud-based, to make things move with the right autonomy that I have through the right leadership. So it's not like previous leadership. I know like uh, one of uh, our friends, I don't know if she's here, uh, she told me that during uh, Zoom, she hired people like we just talked about. Uh, during uh, the, the COVID, she hired people and she doesn't see that she has that influence on them, that respect that she earned. Because there are no barriers before they used to knock the door, before they enter and everything. But she doesn't have it. She doesn't need to have it. Khalas, it's not anymore. I know. People will follow you because they need direction. You need to solve problems. 
and we work side by side. It's not anymore the hierarchy standard. Okay, I'm going to be talking about a personal experience. So this is a broken heart, by the way, if you didn't notice. Okay. <laughs> I moved to Abiyat 2019 as a CHRO. We have operations, it's a mega, uh, mega retail store. It, 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 we sell um, tiles, uh, we do aluminum, um, furniture, what have you. From end to end to build any house. The company owners are so sincere, they wanted to have the best life experience for their customers and their employees. And they were struggling year after year after year until they realized that they failed. They hired me to fix it. I told them it cannot be fixed because it's not reasonable. We cannot be the best in everything. We cannot even be the best in two things. Only in Kuwait. I'm not talking about it globally. So we need to focus on what really matters. They said, we know what really matters. Employee experience. Let's make everything digital. We bring SAP. They have success factors similar to Oracle. I'm not promoting anything or anyone. So... We do everything digital, end-to-end -end employee experience, from hire to retire, all through the system. What happened? There is no reliability in that, because once we implemented that, guess what happened? COVID happened. And we did end-to-end -end succession, performance, payroll, everything. Even as a, as a manager, you, you send your request to, to, for, for a vacancy, and they will... The HR will, you know, get back with an SLAs and everything. Very sophisticated. But we didn't care about the employee experience. So what happened when Corona happened? We used WhatsApp. Throw all the money in the trash. Leave it there till things get better, inshallah. We didn't address the challenges. It was really pathetic. And most of the people didn't have emails at that time. So we used WhatsApp. We should have saved all this money. Second, there is no HR interaction whatsoever. HR were alone because of a lot of work that we had. Everyone was busy because everyone was thinking about healthcare, making sure that the people are safe and healthy and responding to calls, counting the people who got COVID. The manager were alone. We were not supporting them. HR was alone, desperate, and the people were afraid. Last but not least, unfortunately, zero customer satisfaction. Consumer, customer, what have you. Why? Because the system that we built, we didn't think it how it will contribute and add value to the customer. Too bad, too sad. The same happened with Bobian, the company I'm working for now. It's not perfect. No place is perfect. And no place that I was able to get exactly what we did well and we did right and get it to be cloned in another place. Nothing. None of my HR. Even when I moved, I get all my policies with me, all my work with me. Trust me, it won't work. You need just to adapt and grasp the concept and then try to modify accordingly. Again, we said Bobian is the most digital bank. They have this chatbot, we call it Musaad, you know, as helper. Okay, and it's a real name, by the way. Even Ramadan, we ask them, what is the, the recipe to do, uh, you know, this food? Or a fatouche, or do this. They, they will answer you for 400, you know, uh, recipes. So we were very interactive. We were very interactive. We used uh, digital. We were uh, digitally, digitally, you know, uh, uh, operating for a long time. When COVID happened, within two months, we were able to make an HR application to discuss employees' issues, whether it's uh, life insurance, whether health insurance, what have you. So what they did, they standardized the experience and make it personal based on their level and what they need. If I'm a manager, I need to do this with my people, how I can communicate with my people and everything. It's an application. Everyone can download the application. Why? Because it's derived from the Bobian Bank application. Simplicity. Even now, people want to use it. They don't want to use the new Oracle or whatever. They're used to it. It's simple because already the application was simple. And we are the top in the market in that. Last but not least, we were able to help the consumer, because we had one system that's helped the customers and helped the employees uh, alike. And actually, we moved some of the experiences and some of the, uh, the, the tools that we have for the employee experience to help the customer if they were in need. We were very, very happy. It's not the most advanced, even now, from the people's side, because we're still developing. However, 
that was the best experience. Okay, so as an HR, we moved into different, different, different stages. Uh, let's just discuss it today really in a, in a loudly. Where do you think we fit in general or as an organization? Most companies have HR more as a payroll, which is not bad. It's not bad. It's okay. Operational HR, where we have all the divisions of HR, even as one person, it doesn't have to be advanced. Then integrated talent management, where we have everything done digitally and with succession planning, more of realizing what we want and what we're doing with the competencies. Here, more of differentiating. So HR is different than everyone else. Last but not least, we didn't reach here there yet. However, it's more about team-based working collectively and contributing more like social learning. Where do you think we fit? Your company? Right in the middle? It's, it's very good, very good, that's very good. Yes, okay. I cannot, <laughs> like cannot be a mix of all because, see, this is experience focused. It's, it's purely experience focused. If you don't have this, you won't be able to proceed, most likely. So you cannot have one here, one there. Usually it's a more of a ladder. I feel if we are here, we're, we're, we're not bad. We're still okay because we move a bit from, we, we have all the, at least most of the uh, HR functions. Okay. And then we moved here. To make sure that we have, see, succession is basically a talent pipeline. We ensure continuity. It doesn't have to, it has to be sophisticated. The differentiator and globalizing, this is what really is challenging. And I, I don't think a lot of people are here yet. I know very, very, very few organizations are there yet because it's new. Because it's, it's strongly linked with cloud and digital and everything. So we'll take it that we are here. So I can hammer everyone here that we are here, okay, and can be mean to you. Is that okay? Okay, great. The last one, yes. So uh, basically, uh, it's uh, driven from the employee where these companies, guess what? The UAE customs, they are there. Employees uh, promote themselves. So you totally own it. And it's all about uh, employee experience with the people analytics, not only HR analytics. And so the difference between people analytics, as you know, and HR analytics, HR analytics says, this person doesn't come at this place, uh, uh, at the office. They always come late. They have this, 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 and that. They didn't perform, and, and all of this. So this is HR, following the process, getting you data about the process. People analytics, it uh, will tell you, Rande, so Rande usually are not, uh, uh, is always coming late on Mondays. Probably she's not happy on Mondays. And help us to build that, to feed into the engagement. So it helps us feed into the engagement, employee experience, happiness, what have you, rather than really running stress management workshops and all this. So cater to employees, cater to a, a branch, and how people are behaving all these days. So this is the second section. Anyone who feels would like to take a break, feel more than welcome. I will be continue talking and bothering you as I go. OK, so we talked about you know, the new era and all the challenges that we have. Now we're talking about more of the, what is the new management style? Okay. So before it used to be hierarchy and control, like we said. People are still stuck there, whether you like it or not. Now, whether we like it or not, due to digitalization, even our kids now, we cannot have all that authority over them. صح? So self-directed and autonomous teams. In Equate, where I left, uh, uh, where I worked uh, for since 2010 and 2019, which is owned by Dow Chemical, from day one we were a team-based organization. So teams take decision, the manager cannot say no. If we follow the protocol, and we are empowered teams, so it's very flat. For uh, 1,400, it used to be 32 employee, we had only 60 leaders, 60 people leaders. The rest are employees. Because employees can lead teams with actual official leaders to deliver a certain 
uh, task. And 70% of everyone's KPIs were 70% based on team. And everyone has 360. It's different. They are different. Okay, uh, but what, what was the challenge? Because we're living in Kuwait, and I can, you know, uh, the last job that I had there was, or the last title was a senior specialist. I could stuck there, be stuck there forever till I'm 60, 65. If my, 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 my superior didn't die or commit suicide, or the, the previous leader. This is officially the case. It's a box, it's closed. I cannot move unless someone dies, or they change, or they like me so much. I suck at politics, so I know I'm gonna be stuck. But the good side of it, I wish I stayed there, because, uh, and, and you know, in Kuwait, to be at 35, 40, and you're not a manager, they look down upon you. Welcome to the Middle East. Tamam? Um, I said, خلاص, I need to move and all this. I regret it, okay? But now I'm still learning in a, in a, in a different way. Working harder, now working smarter, صح? Okay, I didn't memorize it, alhamdulillah, it wasn't wrong. Performance management, this is where we start. This is where we start. Talent development and performance, combined. So uh, when I came to uh, the new role I have in Bobian Bank, I was head of talent management and uh, leadership and engagement. They separated the performance from learning. I was disappointed. It separated the performance from the from the development. Usually, it's going to be all one document. It's good and bad, but however. All right. Let's redefine performance. You know the bell curve. We all have the bell curve, صح? I'm not going to give you a sneak preview. So the bell curve, صح? I told you this. I won't be able to read. Okay. I'm assuming, since you're level three, I'm assuming. So this is performance over time, bill curve going up, going down. You all know this, right? Right? Tamam. These people are 5% poor. Right? Poor behavior. Poor performance, sorry. The remaining here is around 90%. And 5% are top performers. You agree? Yes, no? Okay. I know that some people have another layer here. For exceeding performance, I don't know what that means. Okay, and I do 10%. I am with you on this. I do this. I just did it last year. Inshallah, I'm not a hypocrite, but it's not the right way to do it. So basically, we're challenging this whole concept. It doesn't work this way. I went so far as firing those 5% when I was in Abiyat because they were taking some of the cut that these people are taking, and they're ta these people are really delivering exceptional, exceptional results. You know, there's one tile salesman, monthly, they sell over than $600,000. What is the salary? $1,500. Good bonus, which is nothing. It cannot be the same as someone who's selling less than $30,000, using the same tools. So that's why I said we need to get rid of these people because they, they cannot they cannot be salespeople. I'm sorry, you guys are not uh, checking it, but I'm trying to explain. Um, so so I still wasn't convinced. I'm trying to be right, but it didn't work. Now basically, what we're saying that how performance is actually in reality is this: poor performers similar to the average performers, and then we have those who are really, really hyper exceeding performance. Can you relate? You agree, disagree? What do you think? Hadr? Explaining? Okay, now from, from you, how, the way you observe it. So we said here, the way we look at people, the way we put them into categories is that there are people who are outstanding, who sometimes we choose, oh, today is gonna be Abdul Aziz, tomorrow is gonna be someone else. Because he wouldn't, we don't want him to be so happy, right? And then we go with the exceed, who's like a top 15% uh, of all the performers, and then the rest goes into achieving. The last are five to 10% who are not really performing. This is how we categorize the people. Well, in the reality, and I want you to challenge this, is that poor performers are not so different than people who achieve, 
But there are people who are really, really taking the next level of performance. And you know it's not fair for them to have the same grade. And you're using, they're using their personal connections, their own time, their creativity to really push the productivity to the next level. You agree? Disagree? This is the dilemma that we have, and this is how it should work. And then what you end up doing is promoting the people. For every place I went for, I know that someone needs to be at grade 13, but he falls into grade 10 because of the system. And then we end up leaving that person like Abdul Aziz, leaving the organization. This is basically a categorization of the, the real high performers versus the low performers. Here, this is more of a, a generic, it's an old concept, okay, and still valid in some organizations, that the poor performers are only 5%. The remaining 70 to 90% to, to are achievers. And then you categorize the exceeding performance and outstanding and the top 5, 10%. Totally. Yes. Uh, No, we're judging only the performance. The, the way we, uh, we evaluate performance is that we get people like, uh, from the, the scorecard or KPIs. And then with everyone, although they, all of them exceed 100%, we tend to, and we have to push them back to follow the bell curve, to put them into categorization for a promotion or a bonus or what have you. But in reality, in reality, Whatever we use, whichever system, this you know, way to, to compensate or whatever. In reality, this is how they are actually contributing. They go to the next level. Total. Potential. 100%. Now we're talking about performance productivity, that's why. Uh, yeah, the, pro the, 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 the potential is for development, right? But w when w we're talking about productivity, so that's why I related the performance and, and the, the, actual, the actual output. So w here we're talking about how the, the if I'm evaluating someone to get a, uh, a bonus or an increment, I will look at their actual performance. So you perform this much, you get this much cut, whether it's a bonus or whether it's an incentive, if they are in sales. Totally. No, it's, I'm not uh, categorizing. I'm just saying that this is the actual performance reality. There are people that we think that they're not too bad, not too far, from the people who are really, really doing exceptional work. So instead of looking at, at you know, at the performance like this, I'm very happy with this discussion. So we can all learn a lot. So instead of having like level one for poor, and then level two for achieve as a reality, and then the exceed, and then the outstanding or top performers. It's all about performance, okay? Actually, it is not like that. It is more like this. So this person is three steps ahead of this person, and this person, and this person. So this will be, for example, level seven, and then the, the exceeding is level five, and the achieve is level two, and the performance is level one. In reality, but you're treating them like they're only one step ahead. Okay, excellent. Now, we talked about motivating people, right? We get people engaged, do things the way we want, in the right way, not manipulating, to help them, to push them into the digital era. We agree. We agree, we want them to be digital savvy, to serve us, to serve the business. So, all of us to be productive, to be profitable. So, finance people are here. So, with yourself, with your friend, let's dis discuss one or two examples of what is your intrinsic motivation and I cannot say this word, <laughs> extrinsic, and external motivation. So one and one. We can write it down, we can just discuss it, and then, and then once you guys are done, we can just uh, speak in GitLab.
Okay, so that's your intrinsic. What, what will keep you extrinsic? Uh, what is the external thing that keeps you motivated in general? What will keep you perform from uh, from uh, from the boss or from the society? Position. Position. Okay, thank you. All right. So recognition. Okay, everyone has their own. So we want to just yeah, and let's make some noise. I'm looking at the sea. Would I jump there? Shrike. What else? This is interesting or. Uh, Okay. The motivation, the mission of the company. If if the if my company doesn't have a a nice mission or a purpose driven mission, uh, I won't feel motivated to go to to work. Um, and and I, I'm gonna be hard on you. This will this is internal or external, intrinsic this, or this is uh, internal. Okay, internal. Huh? Yes. I love what you yeah. do, so internal or external? Internal, Tamil. I'm going technical here. For sure, yeah, technical. And then it's, it's the pay for the extrinsic. Okay. okay. Great. The okay. pay, uh, the bonuses for my pr uh, performance. So I'm, I'm getting the, the, the pay, the standard pay. And then it's the, the performance that I do that will get me more uh, bonuses and so on. Yes. So, yeah. For a so simple question, we struggled to realize, right? See how busy we are in, in most cases. And are we aware of what our people are internal and external motivators? So this is experience-driven organization. That's where they go to the next, next level. So in this case, with digital transformation, the digital era, the new way of leading. You know this concept? Yeah, situation leadership, right? Yeah. What else? Denial leadership, transactional, transformational. This is the, the, the best model. And then the six styles of leadership, coaching, affiliative, democratic. And how can this all work in the digital era while I'm using Zoom? How easy? Is it now? I don't have the setup. I don't have. I don't have the meetings. I don't have the time. Where everyone is delivering. Everyone is automated. Yeah. It's autocratic. Uh, it, it's people have the, the full autonomy to deliver without coming back to the leader. This is a team-based organization. This is what digital living in the digital era actually means. That I only meet my team members for discussion, for you know business intelligence and building, but I know that they are doing the right thing. This will not work, trust me. I struggle to, to, <laughs> to do this at home, or with, 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 with my team. Pardon? Which one? Hey. I cannot uh, pronounce it, so it's good. <laughs> it's fine. So what I'm saying that whether we like it or not, we are pushed with globalization, whatever. We, we cannot do things that we used to be anymore. We're not in the comfort zone. We're not in the comfort zone, simple as that. However, there is hope, okay, that there is a, a, a model in my, in my book, Prevail. I realized that with all the 18 years of experience that I worked with leadership, I have a, a more of a global, and it has been challenged by Jack Zinger, the, you know, the, the, the Falkman team, Marsha Goldsmith also on, on that. And they complimented that this might work. And what is that? In general, in general, any leader is not someone who is decisive or someone who is a bully or bold, okay? Especially in, in the business. And in, in business, because there, there are outcomes and there are uh, results, so you cannot fake it. You can't be like a democratic or, you know, someone running elections, rhetoric speech, and then you expect to win the votes. This is reality. And I like business because you can get fired if you screw up. I like that, okay? Because I will grow if I fail, and then I will continue. Life goes on. So for any mission, any mission, you need a vision, the why. 
we have a small y, big y, fat y, y of the y. Okay, you can have all the y's that you want. Either a y to do something, a task today, or I do, I deliver it for my KPI, or I do for my life, or for my family. Do I have the competence? Okay, ability, ability, the competence to achieve that vision. I want to be a millionaire. I checked here, I know that I don't have that. But then I checked, uh, will I want to uh, learn? I said no. I don't want to do it, so I don't want to continue on that the triangle of leadership. To be a millionaire. I want to be a coach, yes. Do I have the tools? Yeah, I can go take a, a certification, I can do this, all right. What is the change I want to see in the world? Or for me? I have one, two, three. So when I do this, I do that, I check. Am I on path? Yes, no, I change either my vision, I have the wrong vision, or I don't have enough tools. Maybe team members, maybe budget, right? But it's a competence. And then we keep changing. What separates the good from the bad? Through my humble, humble, humble experience. Okay? It's fulfillment. It's a new concept. I was looking at purpose. Authenticity, vulnerability, care, genuine, what have you. But the right word that I felt even in English is better than the Arabic, which is Arabic is Rida. Uh, Rida. Fulfillment is am I fulfilled? Am I happy? Not in terms of cash. Do I have the energy to do it? Right? So when I'm here talking to my colleagues, I get the full fulfillment. It gives me the energy. As soon as I'm done, I feel bad. I feel sad. It's related to the achievement. Yes. Yes. And what else? What do you think adds to that fulfillment? I'm talking to you because you are more mostly an HR and managers. Totally. Cash? Cash is good. Interest? Eh? Yes. 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 Totally. Yes. Totally. Achieving, achieving, what motivates me? So motivation, what else? Impact, which is related to? X, okay, okay, great, great. It's all correct, it's all correct. The, the key word is, is, is my values. Okay, when I do the exercise of the values, okay, I, I put on the screen more than 60, no, 76, 76. Uh, uh, values, which are competencies, by the way, okay? If I had a better slide on the internet with more number of values that are visible, I would have added maybe 200 values. And the values are too, too detailed and too specific, like there's a, co a difference between achievement and competence. Uh, I'm sorry, and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and competing. Uh, uh, achieving and uh, value, uh, value adding, creativity and innovation, idea generation, that, that's too, too specific. Family is there. I know family is not top of my values. I'm telling, I'm telling you bluntly, everyone knows that. I'm more of an achiever, so family comes next. I'm not saying that I'm not going to save my family uh, if they needed me. I would be the first to be there, but I'm not the family guy. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here on my weekends. So someone cannot be a hypocrite with themselves. They need to know what they are good at. And that's why when you get people who are really, really contributors, and you get people who are really achievers, and fortunately, overachievers, who will, feel, who will neglect it later on. But if I'm aware that I'm an overachiever, who will end up in life being sad, because I had the self-ego and being selfish, Self-centered, yes, into that. And this goes not only for all the achievers, even the, for the people who are family-oriented. Because you need to balance. Not everything is equal, but you need to balance how you're gonna make money, how you make your people proud, how you're gonna share life lessons with your people. Your people, children, family, society. So, fulfillment is the key word. You want to be authentic? Someone who walks the way, knows the way, talks away, and basically is the living role model if we want to achieve. And that's how we have mentors. Mentors are people who actually moved all the way from the self-leadership model. 
you have Hitler, good leaders, bad leaders, because of the fulfillment. If this doesn't fit me, I will say no. Once I started realizing my values, I started to say no to a lot of jobs, no for a lot of opportunities, because I know the, what are the, the priorities I have in life and where I want to really be, you know, uh, uh, special, special from all the seven billion people. There are seven billion plus. India are really growing. <laughs> They're producing babies. They're going to be nine million in no time. How people will recognize you? You need to help them recognize you by recognizing yourself. You need to know what you're good at. Really, really, really good at. Be special and khalas. Okay, I'm sorry. This is my inspiration. This is my interest stick. This is with the cheese or with the... Uh, cheese, cheese, cheese. Yeah, that's correct. It's too obvious, alhamdulillah. Yani when I'm thinking, th this is my motivation. Inshallah, yani, iknaf ibn al Yes, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, of course, of course, ibn al-Kanaf. So uh, this is a treat for Marina, inshallah. Inshallah, it should be. Okay, so we move to the next level. If we did the um, self-leadership, uh, with applying the, the model that we had the, the, on self-leadership. So I am a personal contributor. I'm an exceptional performance, a, a performer. People come to me for guidance. Right? So then I need to use my influencing skills if I have a proper why. What are the why people? I didn't. Why that is really serving in nature for a better humanity, better environment, better living. That when, even when I die, people can pursue this, uh, this vision. I know every person has this, one way or the other. Then I'm becoming more influential. And this is the essence of my book. So the essence of everything I do, because I'm a leadership fanatic. And then when people follow me, <laughs> wherever I go, they will follow me. They needed a, an aspiration. I need something to achieve. Okay, so I cannot do all of this while not having fulfillment, motivation, what have you. So I have fulfillment. I'm happy. My team getting fulfilled of whatever we do all together, combined, like enjoying the kanafe, right, with Kaak. Leading the team of four years to achieve the exceptional vision that we had imagined. Right? And this is the way to go. Even if I feel down, they will pull me up. They will hold me accountable for my values. And this is the reason why I wrote the book. It's black and white. You can challenge me. I have it right in front of my desk. I distribute it to my team members. I tell them if I, if I, um, if I screw up or I'm saying something co any contradictory to whatever, whatever I have preached, please come back to me and tell me that you're not authentic. Because I want to live a, a good life. A job can come and go. I want to be authentic. I want to be true to myself, to my people, to be happy. People can tell if you are lying. So خلاص, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Right? We are in the third part now, digital HR. We realized what we need to do to move people to do the things that we want. We got everyone on board. We all have this background, all this information. However, as HR, as a shadow of the management, or maybe you are the management, we need to define who we are in order to understand what is the right model for my business to operate, okay? What we do and how we do it. Values, culture, experience, this is all there. And if you get the person, the leader, who demonstrates all of this, this is the potential part. This is the potential leader that I want. Not the one who performs. The one who has the potential and perform. Not exception, and maybe exceptionally, okay, but they, at least they have all of this. And this is what is referred to as the leadership brand. <sighs> Who we are, what we do, and how we do it. Uh, because the, the why is, is from the beginning. The why is from the beginning. But then uh, we have the strategy, so we know what, we, what we're doing. But thank you for this. For me, the why is everywhere. So um, now we're going more to the action. So that's why it's all about the how. In the pandemic, and in every recession, we are still in recession, alhamdulillah, yani, inshallah things will get better. Um, the problem is that we hire quickly and then we fire quickly, and then we hire again. As an HR, we know how much that is devastating. Are we challenging finance, good finance people? That, pardon? All the time, and you're winning, well, 
كفو والله اي نيت ورك وذ يو اوكي سو 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 بيسكلي وي نيت تو اكسبلين تو ذيم ذات وين يو فاير اند ذس از ون اوف ذا ميجر ديليمز ان ذا ون اوف ماي بريفيوس كومبانيز ذات ذي ونت تو هاير بيبل فور تو ييرز اند ذن ذي فاير ذيم سو ذي تيك اول ذا بينيفيتس اند ذي ليف اف يو فاير يو جيف ذيم اول ذا بينيفيتس اند اوف سيرفيس اف ذي ليف ويلينجلي يو جيف ذيم هاف بيرسنت ذس از ات ليست كويتي لو maybe the global law as well so this is a dilemma that we need to be more adaptive more strategic understanding what we need who to keep and who not to keep not because of the the, uh, the amount of revenue that i'm generating versus cost and profit it's more about the why it's more about the the potential of the people more about the values of the people because a, a person i know a person whose his salary is now $5000 But with one call, he got his uh, brother-in-law to have a, uh, a saving account with, I think, $2 million, $2 to $3 million. So the amount uh, of uh, interest this person generating is maybe 10 times more the salary that he's bringing. So even if he didn't work, with his connections, he added more value to the business. And my, my manager is not willing to... to to appreciate, uh, to recognize this person. See, that's the problem. Okay, so we have a business case, we go to our bosses, or to go to ourselves as a business owner, and we tell them we have a case for change. We realize that we need to change. We need to be, you know, uh, uh, it's not only digitally, it's how we think, because digital is a tool, again. People hide behind the tool. Like, for example, when we did the, the, the feedback, performance feedback, Um, managers used to, and they have to, meet face to face with the employees and tell them the bad news, give them feedback. Once we had the system, they were hiding behind the system. <laughs> okay, and we had even more complications, and then HR has to do double work and the work of the manager, which is not correct. So, these are the stages, realizing what is the strategic priorities. So, this is, these are the strategic priorities, our why who we are and what we're trying to do as an organization, okay? How do we get there? Is it cloud, changing the business model? We need to be experts because, you know, the concept of a business partner was done long time back, by the way. Dave Aldrich, the founder of the business partner, came with the concept since 1997. 1997. <laughs> so uh, a human uh, resource uh, personnel or a manager understand the business more than the business itself, okay? What we're doing with that? So we, we know enough, we know enough to influence the management and finance and, and sales and how to do things. Then checking the cost versus benefit of going with this platform, cloud, or what have you. A small exercise, okay? Are you more of a federated HR, so it's distributed, or a centric HR? Okay, so you can do it يعني, with, with your... Uh, neighbor, and who does the people management? Is this HR, is it managers, or is it both? I'm validating the, the leveling that we have, three, five. And if you could change these things, what would you change? Take your time and let's imagine. You can total. Okay, so federated, federated HR, you have like, for example, business partner working with the uh, with uh, different departments, okay, doing all the work versus a centralized, all the systems are done by one HR or by, by the HR department alone without that, uh, we're not enabling the, the managers to do the work, okay? Um, here, the, the people management, who does the people management? Is it only the HR? They are in need of this or is it the people or the, the, the managers doing it? So what do you think? What do you think is, is the model that you are really implementing? Since we're talking about, you know, uh, operating model, business model. Both? Very good, okay. Federated? Yes. Excellent, excellent. For now, I don't have anything to change now, but uh, we need to think about it. Okay, okay. 
Any person would like to share more insight? I think uh, in our company we should emphasize more and have this role of federated uh, HR. Federated HR. Uh, to give more uh, the role for internal uh, managers to have uh, to, to help maybe the, the HR in in leading the the people in, in instructing the company vision. Uh, the values, so I feel like federated HR is, or, or a mix of both is good. Okay, excellent. What about the people management? It's both. Both? Okay, great. So uh, evolving, like the slides that we had, we need to go to different, different stages. Ideally, now, we should be in the federated. Okay, so HR is distributed with the business. In the future, HR will be centralized. Because people are aware. Totally, yes. Mumtaz. But you didn't move to federalized, to federated. Okay, so you go to federated and then you go to centralized. <laughs> yes, because there is an involvement in that. Going back to this, to this slide. Knafa looks good again. Again. There is a, a level of education that we deliver to our leaders. And this, okay, let's go really quickly on this one more time. Talent acquisition. Notice the word talent came into place. Here it wasn't talent. There is no talent whatsoever. صح? Now there is talent. Total rewards, total rewards, not compensation and benefits. There is a change in mindset here. Okay, so it's more of a talent-driven HR, center of excellence, business partner, and all of this. People realize the leadership aspect of their role rather than managers. Then to move to the next level. Now they are coaching people. Talent, talent management. Right? And this is the new concept I just came with my, the bank that I said we're all talent. There are no talented people. Yani, how come you... you, you Tag a person that is not talented. Why did God create him? He's talented, or he's talented maybe in cooking, singing, whatever, but not talented because he doesn't fa meet your requirements. It's a big issue. So, pardon? Being different is talent. So, talent management is everyone. Carlos, everyone is talent. So, what you're telling me, I'm telling uh, as a leader or as an HR, basically the message that we're saying that everyone needs feedback, everyone needs coaching, not only the top performers. Because the people with different needs, and you don't know how you can flip them around, knowing their interest, like, you know, all the motivation you know, theories and what have you. So they move all the way here. HR is still pushing their agenda. It's still educating everyone about talent management, leadership, what have your purpose, and everything. Needs to sync. Once it's sync, everyone is at the same level, then we can go to centric. I cannot keep it centric all the way. They didn't buy. They didn't buy my concept. Again, right? Motivation. Okay. So that's why it's, it's uh, centric. Why is centric now? With the digital. Because basically, we will have everything and we're going to give the autonomy to the people. They know what is coaching, how to coach, feedback, why it's important, why leadership versus management, management is important, leadership is important, what is, uh, how to, uh, using AI, oh, okay, I'm not going to scroll, I'm going to keep it for later. So, so basically, that's why centric is, and, and, and people, managers, and HRs come together for the performance management. Why? HR comes together for quality assurance, people, managers do their work, and the performance. Every time, every time, the compensation department, they stay three months, challenging the leader, a leader challenging them back, for the performance, for the rewards. They, they think it's HR budget. They don't see it as the organization budget. If I'm limited to only giving, giving a, a promotion for 3 to 4% of my budget. Excuse this me. is something. No. Yes. Since you went to, uh, to it again, I just want to make a quick, a quick comment. I don't like the situational leadership model. And I don't think it's real representative of what the leadership development phases should be. It's, first of all, it's awkward, you know, going from right to left. D1 is directing, which is true. You tell people what to do at the beginning. 
But D2 is coaching, I have an issue with that. Okay. You don't coach at level two. No. And then D3 is supporting. I guess you should be supporting at level two after okay. you direct them, okay. give them the, you know, engage them. And then uh, after what they are, you know, above average, you start coaching them. And then at the end, you fully delegate the job to them and make them leaders. So, uh, you know, we keep referring to this and uh, we use it even though I see a flaw in it. Yes. Very humbly and very seriously. I agree. Uh, so I just wanted to make this What's remark. What's your good name? Uh, Yusuf Khouri. Yusuf, yeah. No, sir. I agree. I, I would go with uh, a training at the, the, the level one, Ma micromagic level two, coaching level three, and then well, having a class. To tell you the level. truth, I did, I did a different, I did a different, uh, more uh, memorable model. Then we need for to a team leader. We need to talk about it then. Yeah, it's T-E-A-M. It's easy. T-E-A-M. You, you we'll, talk, yes. you engage, you assess and aim for higher goals. This is where you do the coaching. And then at the end, you make a new leader by this delegating. We, we need to discuss it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so so basically, just to compliment that we're not, you know, uh, assuming our own, in our own ocean or we're thinking in La La Land, the RBL new model uh, after COVID it's generic. They, they didn't uh, mention a specific department like they used to. They used to do. So they used to, uh, to mention center of excellence, where all the talent acquisition, development, uh, performance are all in one place. Then we have a business partner. They they made it. It's, it's autonomous. You make your own. As long as we simplify complexity through digital, mobilize information, what needs to to send what information and to whom. Advanced human capabilities, develop uh, talent acquisition, what have you. Foster collaboration through the system to build the, 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 the experience. Last but not least, accelerate the business. This is the result, this is the measurement, this is productivity. We cannot do all of this and not uh, delivering. Or delivering result, what, what, what there is uh, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, more of a uh, hierarchical or uh, what do you call it? No, no, uh, pardon? Segmentation. Okay. Moving into digital more. After COVID, until now, based on Gartner, almost 90% of talent acquisition across, whether you're an entrepreneur, business owner, or a, a, an organization, they shifted towards virtual interviewing, recruiting staff remotely. Okay. Canceled all the attendance uh, live events. That the big uh, open day, what they do. Why? Because AI can do the job for us. Why, why waste the time? And guess what? If I want to do everything physical, that people need to come to Lebanon to meet me and to, to meet the organization. But now I can do it and I can hire from everywhere. We hire people from Eastern Europe in terms of technology, AI. We do that in Egypt, we do that in Jordan. And we, everyone has their own working model to be the top in our game at Bobian Bank. How to keep people engaged? Something we mentioned that today. صح? How to keep people engaged working remotely? So there are a few tips. What are the employee experience alternatives? We have here maybe we have a, a maybe social gathering, town hall meetings, huddles. Uh, we have what we call as Khamis al Winis, Happy Thursday. You get free coffee from 9 to 12. Every time I go there after 12. So I don't get a free coffee. Okay? So uh, what we will do for the people who are working remotely? Design a deliberate, spontaneous interaction. Make it look like it's spontaneous, but you know, you know this person's birthday. You know there is something special. Or you know that today you're gonna be uh, celebrating someone just for being a team member, okay? Have a, couple of, a catalog of uh, water coolers, water coolers and others discussion, like huddles and everything done virtually. So we can do a game together, who knows, all right? Building that connection, building that connection with the people Foster continued uh, collaboration and empathy. One of the good examples about empathy and compassion, you know, maybe you saw this video, a guy who's wearing there with a full suit, and then uh, talking to his manager, and then the guy stood up for his kid, and he was wearing shorts, I didn't? Lakers, I think. Lakers are good, it's okay, but if anything else, then it would be bad. And then uh, the manager was upset, and then he stood up, so smart, huh? and then he showed that he was also wearing shorts. Compassion, 
And now they will build the connection, build the trust that you were talking about. Yeah, the challenge here, we're talking about uh, virtually. Uh, th this was uh, the ch challenge. Yeah, uh, based on my experience, uh, those activities should really be uh, very much um, repetitive. Because uh, keeping the culture remotely cannot work with one time a week, one uh, mm. meeting, one water cooler, one event. It dropped down very quickly. So you have to be very consistent yes. and try co to keep the momentum because it's like disappearing in a second if you skip it. Exactly. Father. I think it's uh, very challenging for big companies. Like you, you have. 100 or 200 employees and you want to fit them all in one screen it's it's very hard and with the internet problems it's also uh, it's uh, hectic uh, i think we can we can make it uh, better if we have uh, better internet and with the virtual reality it would be we can get there but for now i don't like it i hate it those virtual meetings that are uh, uh, no communication. It's it's. Uh, I don't know. It's well, it, it's hard. Well, that's the challenge. Uh, that we're trying to. And they turn off the camera. Yeah, <laughs> because they're not talking to their friends. Yeah. And what we're trying to do here is to be empathetic, to remember that we also are bored with these meetings, and we try to make the best of it. We're all stuck here, so let's let's make it fun. So. Yes. was being able to package the real life experience on the virtual. So I will, I will say a bit more about that because we are human beings and we've been, uh, we, we were born to be with each other. So a screen, even if it's AI and you're gonna put stuff in your ears and your eyes, will never, it's like being a mom virtually. You can't Cannot. because those are things that are just embedded in us. So what helped a lot during COVID is being able to kind of package this experience that they had at the office, like their favorite coffee, mm. uh, the picture of their son and whatnot, and they would be delivered to them at home okay. for, for them to open, touch, feel. We have five senses. You can't, you can't just give me the eyes and the ears and tell me to be fully convinced. Something to taste, their favorite crackers that they used to have at the office. Interview. It's very simple stuff that bring out in, in those people this, uh, like when you have a small cookie that reminds you of your grandmother. Uh, that she used to make it 50 years ago, but the only smell of it takes you back to this place. Yes. So it's also the touch and feel of things, not only the, the screen, whatever you do on screen, will never equalize a small lotus that is and used to be their favorite thing in the morning. I Just agree. a small example, but there are yes, so many yes. things. Yeah, of course, we can be as creative. This is, uh, this is the part. Is you're really taking the, the, that extra effort to make it work. In your case, you're only one sense. <laughs> you're only listening. So don't allow them to do that. Because again, you're authoritative. Y you look boring to them. So I always say, Mudir dam Mudir So in order, to get to earn the people trust, I feel that we need to show a culture of sensitivity and visibility. So be visible, be there as much as possible. Visit them, you know, every once in a while. You're the manager. You make sure that everyone is aligned, live, happy, engaged. Okay? It's your responsibility not to deliver uh, results through you, through them. Leave your camera on so you can share this, uh, the slide with them. Okay? Humanity, humanity, uh, ask, whatever, you know, just, just break the ice. Be spontaneous. You're the boss. You can do whatever you want. Vulnerability, show them. I'm stuck here. I'm doing this. Half of my uh, videos I show on Zoom, I have my kids throwing things at me. I don't know how they get out of the door, but they do it. That's me. You take the full package. And respect by showing respect, right? Earning the trust. So it does start with, with respect. You respect their time, you know, their, their, their and also ex you force them to be there on time as well. So if they have, they cannot always have exceptions. So it's a good cocktail of how we can really keep them engaged from our end, beside the tools. Don't do this. Let's talk about it. How many of us, okay, let's stand. Who, whoever, whoever knows exactly the number of people they have in their organization, Please stand up. I feel like Eminem, Madri. So. Yes, uh, if you know, 
exactly how many people you have in your organization. How many is any uh, staff members? Please stand up. The numbers not currently. Yalla, tfadli. Alhamdulillah, not very good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yalla, tamam, tamam. I feel like rapping. Please stand up. Please stand. And then, how many people you have? A small. Alhamdulillah. How many people you have? Mumtaz, how many people do you have? Excellent. How many people do you have? Mumtaz. Very good. How do you guys know these numbers? Uh, payroll. Very good. Okay. No, but what about people who are on the payroll or not in the payroll? If it's not, you know, you don't go month by month. If you want to check day by day, moment by moment. System. We all have systems. Excellent. Excellent. And beside that, what other information that gives you real-time data? The, uh, yani, do you have a system that gives you real-time data on everyone? You mean the attendance? Whether it's attendance, whether it's uh, uh, the, the percentage male, female, ages, who's on the, there, who's there. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, we have a system that really is bad. It's, uh, we did it in-house. Really, really bad. We did, we did it in-house. Now we're implementing uh, the, the Oracle Fusion, HCM. Um, inshallah, it will be efficient. It will be efficient. Oracle and uh, success factor. Those two are the best you know, for banks. We have 837 employees. I don't know how many we have today. Now. But we know that uh, month by month or week by week, how many people do we have? We need to have access to that information. Because from that, you can build the experience and the people analytics. So, alhamdulillah, you are in the first step there. Guys, we're almost there. Alhamdulillah. You're not uh, going to suffer anymore. So, remember when we said we hire and fire quickly and everything, and we know what we want, we know what we're doing, who we are, and what we want to do? Uh, workforce planning is key. Includes everything. Includes the, po the potential, includes the skills, the competencies that we have, and everything. So. Why is competencies important? Basically, to know what are the type of people that I will promote and where I will fit them for now and the future. So, for example, what RBL did with our bank? They uh, identified 25 competencies, each at four levels. So 100 competency level with descriptions, not one description, descriptions on what each level needs to do should do. That combines the best leadership practices for the future and how we should behave within the bank. So for example, we are very flat. We take action and then we correct it. Our co competitor or our uh, parent, they do things correct, then they check for customer feedback or vice versa. For us, we like to be fast. We like to be the first. So things change the accordingly. So in order to maintain this breed of people, this DNA coming you know, to life and having more and more people groomed to be this way with the minor character, characteristics, differences, and styles, we will know where they will fit. And then from them, we know who is the best fits in sales and who best fits in audit and who best fit, fit. But they need to all demonstrate the same leadership capability. Once we know this, we know uh, of course, they increase the pressure on HR to, for the organization, then set up, identify the talent needs, this is what you mentioned, and then the right mix of talent and technologies. So for these guys to operate, I know the tec technical knowledge, what is about the, 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 I'm sorry, the technical knowledge, what about the technology that they need to have? Because now we said that we're gonna be digital. So it's not enough that they know people skills or leadership skills or whatever sort of skills. Their CFA or whatever financial, for example, uh, certifications, are they technical savvy? Are they digital savvy? The level that we want. Can they push us forward? Are we going to be listening to them if they give us ideas? One, one example that we had in Bobian Bank was in 2014. People can collect money even though they're not a bank, uh, uh, they don't have account with the bank, with their civil ID. They, take a, uh, they put their civil ID number, they will add their, uh, they will enter their uh, civil ID in the ATM machine and they will collect the money. Okay? But we had a system to listen. 
to them. Now, unfortunately, with risk mitigation, everything things became harder. It's not secure to do this, but so but people are frustrated. They come to us for these nice, simple solutions. We need to adapt, or we lose our consumers and customers. Right. So this is how it goes. Once we have this uh, effective workforce planning, employee will succeed because we put people in the right place in the right time for the right generation with the right advancement that will happen the next year, two years. We make sure that everyone will be happy. Chat GPT. So we talked about AI, how they can help. Uh, you know, all this you know, programming, RPA, we're going to talk about it. How this can help us as entrepreneurs and as business to do things. And the question came to me, can we replace an admin role or anyone for AI? This is what I get when I ask them about myself. With the, with the free cheap version, they told me, I'm sorry, it was, it was nice enough to say that I don't know you. Okay, we went to another one. So uh, different locations, different uh, chat GBT. They don't know. The one and only, the cousin of Majda Rumi, Abdelaziz Rumi. Okay, but the, the, the more expensive version with, with Google, they, they, they know me. So it's not that bad. However, in reality, in reality, we can use, and it's, it, it, it's logical for us to use chat GBT and any technology to help us, like we're using our iPhones. And these are what it's capable of. This is generic, you can find it anywhere. So they can summarize text for you, they do it very well. Classify content, answering questions, translating and converting languages. What you need to do in filing, they will do everything for you. It will save time, it doesn't take sick leave, and it won't bother you for any excuses. Hopefully I will see this sometime in the future. It will not replace real moms, however. Okay, so yes, things will be changing in the future. I think it's just exaggerated. All right, but we'll be ready for it and we need to use it. I admire Amazon for doing it effectively. They're doing all their logistics and all their, you know, uh, I forget the word, the the, the stores, all, all fully, fully, fully digital. And they do it, didn't do it, do it in house, they bought the technology. Very smart, very smart. I like Amazon and how they are really, really niche and what they're doing. They're superb in everything they do. When we came up with our mission, vision, and values, we had the purpose, we paid a lot of money for this. You know what they have? They only have one, one, one statement, the purpose. They don't have mission, vision, it's just one. They, ha they have values, I think, but they don't have a mission, a vision, and purpose. They have just one thing, to be the most customer-centric organization in the world. It's all clear. Guess what? Every six months, they fire people. It's the worst working environment. But, they're but, but they are changing to be better. That means it is real. You need to be better in dealing with your people experience. Last but not least, bringing on all of this together, talent management. We talked about uh, uh, purpose-led uh, organization, how it really means, what it really means, how we use the technology to make it easy, and how to amplify the organization culture. These are, in general, in general, you know, and most likely the employee's life cycle from start to end. How we can use all of this to make a better experience for our people because they are the drivers, because we want to motivate them, because we want to make a better life, better world, better leadership, what have you. Simple as that. In general, candidate experience, candidate experience with search and application through recruitment challenges. You can do digital, you can make it normal. What we can add through the technology to improve the experience, improve the quality of recruitment pipeline and optimizing hiring cost. And it goes vice versa. Okay, let's go at the very end. Employee pulse, what we just mentioned, employee pulse. So capture feedback, this is what most companies are doing. On a new travel and expenses systems rollout, how people feel about this new system. What we can add, what we can do using technology, AI, or what have you, improve tool adoption, improve uh, success rate of new programs, because it predicts. It will tell you, based on the feedback that you had, what you will do. All right? Leadership and culture, okay. Understand employees' perception of gender and parity issues. Improve gender and parity workforce diversity. It will give you that. We need to use that. Last but not least, we need to consider how 
all of this will reflect not only to serve our purpose, but to make it meaningful for the people. So they will drive the digital transformation. People will be skeptical. You know that. This will replace me. They think, and you think this will replace them. So we need to think, think, think differently. So how we need to adapt? For example, for any unexpected expenses, we have an expected purchase. For people who are asking a time off, we can just produce flexible working hours. For anyone who's getting a new job, we know that they will be introduced to a new team and what they need to do to optimize, or what you can do for them to optimize this new experience. We're all humans again, we all can fall the same uh, challenge or uh, trap. Last but not least, forget everything that we're doing now. The statement I always like to remind myself about, what is your legacy? What do you want to be remembered for? Comes to the end of our session. This is a brief about me. I just became, just had 18 years of experience, by the way, to move to 17. This is my book. This is, these are my roles. This is, you know, just in a nutshell, what I have as a total, you know, uh, something that I'm proud of, of all the, the, the projects. A small testimony from Marsha Goldsmith. May God bless him and, you know, just help him to inspire more and more people. And that's it. This is a QR code. Shkurin, Thank you. Follow, subscribe. Well, I'm more than happy. We open questions. To any uh, well-being program? Of course. It is, uh, well, Thank you. Uh, people analytics will, will tell you the level of engagement. It is your call. How we want to reflect it into the employee experience. Right? So people analytics is about an individual or a department or a team. How they are acting how they are performing, how they're doing their work on a certain day. So it will predict for you that with the use of AI, which is embedded the most of the solutions that, you know, they're everywhere. Um, if this person is going to be taking how many sick leaves, if this person is going to be continuing with the organization or not, based on the input they get. The HR analytics will tell you what's happening now, but it will not predict. And to not go for, I will not tell you that this person is uh, coming on Mondays. Most likely, they are motivated. They're coming late on Mondays, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, they can go as smart as you know. Also, uh, uh, providing you with the proposed solutions, usually, usually it is valid. But definitely, it's with HR, and HR need to you know uh, need to push it. I think managers won't like it. Just to let you know. Yeah. More questions. Totally. So thank you so much for the inspiring presentation, Mr. Abdelaziz, and welcome in Lebanon because you are cousin also of, of Majda Rumi. <laughs> <laughs> so you've mentioned uh, during the presentation that in the digital era we have to move from work hard to work smart. Yes. So till now I don't know the difference because I always am a true believer that we have to always work hard to yes. achieve and You're to right. reach our goals. Yes. Nothing comes as easy I as... Agree. Uh, I agree, 100%. It's just that the matter of uh, uh, working harder is becoming less and less important because instead of doing all the paperwork, now we do everything in one click. Uh, the second thing is that how we can relate to amplify my effect. If I do my best without the proper um, communication or branding to my work, that I'm failing. So all of this is enabled through technology. Uh, that's why most of us have now social media and they're using all of this, although they don't want to be, uh, for example, fashionista. Or influence technology. It is technology, 100%. Yeah. Shukran. Tfadl. When it comes to deploy all these uh, technological, let's say, uh, tools in the HR department, yom bi matrah maayyan adi kilna baadna ma fi hal awareness baal HR bi atabar cost al organization. So yom kif bi deja ena al yom hal business owner. To deploy all these technological tools, but all the clear young economic challenges worldwide. I'm not talking about the side of it, especially post-pandemic. So, how do we get the young leaders, business owners, young to invest in such departments, which are crucial in a certain way for the performance of the organization? So, how do we get it? So, but now, young, we need a mindset, a mindset shift before talking about development. I agree. Performance. I agree. I agree. So basically, I mean, the, the nature of this presentation is all about 
getting the inspiration and getting the tools to influence the people. So we realized that hiring people, and by the way, hiring people, or getting people is the most crucial element for most CEOs and all HR. Because there is a war on talent. Everyone wants the same technology, okay, and it's, it's scarce. And everyone has access to it. We all go to Eastern Europe or to Jordan, for example, or India. Um, this by itself can force the CEO to enable you to get what you want because these people bring value. The second option I would recommend is be friends with, with the finance. Talk their language, okay, because they are the supporters. Again, we're talking about new things. Not a lot of people, usually CEOs in our organization, they're a bit older, more reluctant to adapt. Okay, so you need to get somewhere with the business to get you on board. Last but, but not least, if you get people analytics, HR analytics come, but it won't really make the difference. The people analytics that will predict how people will perform, and if you can really identify and match performance with productivity, so for example, if a leader says that you put someone as a top performer at a certain level, and this person can be perceived as bringing that much value, you hit the jackpot. But you know, we, the problem with us, we are struggling to show our value through our practices. We, can, we don't relate this with the business whatsoever. Maybe not tangible, even as outcomes. What does it mean? Luckily, alhamdulillah, since 2012, when the new CEO came, um, one of the major, major critical leadership practices was the Organizational Health Index, led by McKinsey. So we do this every two years, and people can get fired for it if they have a poor engagement. Now, I know it's inflated, but people care about it, and they listen to HR practices, pushing people for leadership and coaching and everything, in order for them to get maximum score. At least we're getting it, شوية, يعني, we're lucky to have. I hope that answered the question. Thank you. Thank Hi, yeah, uh, Robert Abbott. Uh, I'm not in the HR world uh, like most of you. I'm an entrepreneur. We have a content creation agency. Um, <clears throat> I have only 16 team members. Who we don't have an office where I'm against office. I don't even have an office for myself. So they kind of work the way that they want, uh, which means sometimes I get called Sunday at 2 a.m. Sometimes I get calls Monday at 6 a.m. It's my fault because every person I hire, I tell them, you work the way you want. It's just task oriented. Right. But after three years, it's starting to get a toll of me. I'm working 24 7 answering everyone. So, Sorry. is there a way that I can you know, gently tell them, uh, let's change the system, work at regular hours? Yeah, it's tell a them problem that, uh, none of you have, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but because, because, okay, again, you, you realize it's uh, your fault. Yeah, You're being too fine. generous. And I can fall to the same. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I, I don't worry about your time, honestly you're being you know, uh, bothered by your team because it's your money. Yeah. However, what I worry about, if you leave, anything happens to you, what will happen to the business? Oh, no problem. I go on vacation for two months in summer, so everything is delegated. Is but why do you respond then to because them? Because I, I work 24-7. I try always to do the best. So there's a manager also. I respond to him also. Okay. I can not respond. Don't but respond. If, if you don't respond, then they will see that the boss doesn't care, so maybe they'll work less. So that's no, no, b b make it straight. Uh, tell them that... We work f within these hours, unless there is something really, really critical, yeah. then... Uh, hey, boundaries. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have that. Lala, you just have to, you just have to communicate that to them. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you for the question. We have, I think, uh, two more minutes for free questions. Hi, everyone. Ahlan. Thank you for the presentation. My pleasure. Um, my name is Sandra Buhanna. I'm a career coach. So basically, I just want to share a few things with our fellow HR. Um, if they're leading their teams remotely, they can benefit from Gather Town. It's a very nice application, mm. virtual. Gather Town. And they okay. can create their own working space with the offices and everything. Okay. And if I enter your office, for example, I'm the only one to interact with you, see you on screen, be able to chat with you. They can meet, 
their fellows, so you know, uh, their colleagues in the hallways, and they also have like a conference room where can where they can just run a conference. So it's a very nice application. You can use it, Gather Town. Uh, on the second level, I just want to um, have the inter intervention on the leadership triangle. Personally, I'd rather go for the icky guy. This is okay. why when you said, uh, what's the fourth element? I said money, because <laughs> you do what you love, what you're good at, what people need, and what you're paid for. And those are the four elements uh, defined by the Japanese model for being um, the purpose. And what was my last intervention? The bell curve. Yes. So I, I'm pretty sure that everyone agrees that we need outperformance, uh, outperformance at the workplace. So we'd, we'd rather keep them where they are, where they're doing good, give them more authorities, because they're doing this because they're passionate about it. They're driven to do it. And if you move them sometimes, promotion is not a good thing. They'd be overwhelmed by other responsibilities because promotions comes with other tasks. Sorry. And keeping them here keeps the organization, you know, we're making more profits, growing, Going, yes. making better, and this is what organizations need to uplift. And the, the bad performers, they might not be engaged because this is not what they want to do. They're just here for the money. Exactly. So maybe assessing moving them to their passion is the right thing to be done. Thank you. Agree. Maybe I took so much time. <laughs> Thank you. Very insightful. Totally. tools, uh, increasing number of tools, of digital tools that uh, we are using, and what would be, what is the impact on uh, on, on the workforce? You uh, using more tools. More too much tools, maybe. Uh, um, no, maybe, is it what uh, one of the organizations that I worked for? Yeah, my, my question was that today we are uh, witnessing a huge number of tools, mm. and both uh, internal, external, so we start by Slack, we finish by WhatsApp, so what would be your recommendation about uh, this huge amount of tools and how can we handle it uh, with the remote team or even with the in-person? Uh, I would like to say, like, uh, keep people engaged. Like now, we just mentioned a, a, a good company, okay? We need to be in informed on what are the good practices either we inc incorporate because we cannot have just one system we ask oracle or success factor or whoever company to incorporate everything and replace everything it's just going to be costly and it's not going to be yeah. worth it so we follow the trend as long as it helps us and we try to minimize it to who we are and what we do we use the tools that really helps us and everything we do and then we see which one we need to adapt more. For example, for us, we went with Teams all the way. Not Zoom, it's Teams. So it's more uh, uh, relevant to us. And in training, we will go with WebEx. It's just too helpful for us, even uh, to work with external trainers. So uh, we understand uh, how they're presenting uh, their material and because we're using also a lot of uh, the virtual learning. So there's no one size fits all. Thank you. Yes, but the lady had there before. Hello, Ola uh, Siara from ICC Group. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank you again for your presentation. And I'm really interested in learning what are the expectations or objectives you have set for this uh, event. And at the same time, what do you expect from us like as a Lebanese people? What do you think, uh, Lebanese HR professionals, what do you think, uh, how, our, uh, how is our in, uh, input will contribute uh, to the uh, objectives or expectations you have? Okay, expectation Lebanese people? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yani, you know, Kuwait and Lebanon, they have this special bond. Abu Yala Rahma, if he knows that in Lebanon, he will be very happy. Uh, basically, the expectation for my session is to get to know my fellow HR folks who are suffering, but I don't want them to be the victim. I want them to be the, the leaders and the change agent in the world because no one is going to do the things for us. We're moving from human resource, and if we keep this title as a human resource, then we are failing because we are going to be on the cost side of the, you know, the balance sheet. صح? We are people, we are talent. 
because uh, they say HR or the people are the most important asset. But you said you are resources. Resources depreciate. So we're telling ourselves you know, indirectly, psychologically, that we don't really matter. So moving that, building that community, seeing what if there is any uh, possible you know, partnerships whatsoever, just to spread the knowledge and share experience for better HR experience and community. Uh, what I expect from uh, any people, Lebanese people or any group, even in Kuwait, there, there are no excuses. Information is everywhere. So budget is not an issue. Internet is not really an issue. Okay? It's just a matter is the mindset. All we talked about here is about mindset. You will have AI, you will have a lot of things, things will change, you have Zoom. What we are doing? Okay, we're all gonna be doing the same thing over and over again. We're gonna wake up in the morning, inshallah, we're gonna have breakfast, drive the car to work, finish, go back home, kids our kids a good night, have dinner. What will happen there? What is the why? So we talk about to people about the why. Are we living our why? Are we changing the concept? Are we pushing leaders to their the role? Are we forcing them to really have a proper assessment for their people, to delivering feedback? Are they delivering proper feedback? Then you ignite the culture, the work experience, and then you will move forward. Now, if for me, the, the Lebanese people, they are very much diverse. They come from diverse background. They're very global. They have this global mindset. So you have all the tools to succeed. Everything now is within the tools. The tools are for free, most likely. I don't expect organizations to pay a lot of money to build that infrastructure. It's just that the mindset that we need to adapt, and then the, the investors will keep the money flowing to support your agenda. It's not going to happen now, but we need to do it all together to make it happen. Today. Thank you very much. It was very insightful. Yes. And this is Leah Farah. I'm an entrepreneur, but uh, as he said, we go into everything mm. uh, since it's a small company. I'd like to have your opinion on the standardization of testing. So now you're okay. saying to put people on the bell curve, mm. you, you can't judge a dolphin by his ability to climb a tree. Sorry. So especially Anna and I'm in the arts world. So we have artisans, we have people doing accounting, social media, so a huge spectrum of people. And what would be success for one might be completely failure for someone else. And what might be, so the day, because sometimes the day you plant is not the same day you harvest, right? So if I have a, a client who is, uh, so let's say a person who's taking care of a client and building a long-term relationship with them, that might germinate five years down the road. If I assess them this year, they did absolutely nothing in tangible KPIs. Okay. But they are planting long-term. So if they take them on their own standards, they would actually be in the 5% on the lower end, Umtaz. whereas they are 10% on the higher end in process. Excellent. Now we talk. We go back to competencies, living the value, all of this. I would go. I I am for this concept. I don't go with results because I don't own the results. I go with behaviors. If you demonstrated the competencies expected, if you did the calls to your best ability, I know that you did your best as per the standard, as per the training that you have, as per the work ethics then this is enough for me. But I cannot judge someone to give them an exceed expectation because they over exceeded their KPIs, but they are too toxic, or they are toxic, or they, they're sneaky, or they, you know, whatever, okay? Or you know, they didn't even work hard enough. Or they delivered this using your resources for another organization. Do you think you're bound to deliver, to give them that, uh, their full uh, exceed expectation or whatever bonus? It doesn't make sense. Right? Systems are there to make our life, you know, uh, uh, reasonable, <laughs> meaningful. So rather, we would go with the how. Don't go with the KPIs, honestly. Go with the how people are behaving day to day. If someone really making uh, the, the workplace uh, better, engaged, to the best of their ability, and delivering results according to the standard, and why of the organization, the purpose of the organization, the value of the organization, planting this long term, these are the people that you need to hold on tightly and share with them the kick. Share with them the, the even the profit, because they are part of it. Yes, salam. But w uh, then, uh, but OKR usually, you know that that um, also the key result, the key results. But usually, you know that uh, OKRs are there more of inspirational. 
strategic. So what if you don't get it? It's okay. Just as a quick uh, recap. Uh, just a quick recap. So OKR is our objective. Like for example, when our CEO came from day one, the day one we were the uh, the last ranking bank, the tenth bank in Kuwait. On day one, in the press release, he said, "I want to be number three. So this was our objective. Okay. And then our key result area, KR, uh, KA, is 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 how to be number nine. How to improve customer satisfaction, and then we do it step by step until we reach to that vision. Now we're trying to be the fifth in the world. Inshallah, we'll be there. Thank you, Anafi. And last question, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, very fast. Thank you for this amazing presentation. Um, I am facing some issues during the pandemic. Um, uh, I introduced Agile, and okay. uh, to help that, uh, I bring Jira uh, for project management and task management. Okay. But uh, I have a team of plus uh, 15 developers between juniors and seniors. And um, I feel that they are not so much happy, like mm. trying to keep in the progress of the tasks uh, in writing or uh, adding the work log. Do you advise that, uh, that we should continue with that approach? Uh, it's good to have this type of task management system, or maybe uh, it will cause that some developers will not feel comfortable. Ask them, what do they uh, have, in, in, you know, for As them, they, they want to remove that. They don't want to keep any status. So that. how will that help the business? It will not help because you need visibility. Mm. So, so you ask them to give a, 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 an another option, whatever they have, so you ensure that the business continue to, to, to pursue the result. Throw it back and we already have a lot on our plate. Uh, on the, uh, okay. Yeah, we're good. Conclusion. Conclusion. Uh, nothing to conclude. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm available there for any questions. I don't know. How, I don't have all the answers. I don't care if I'm right. Uh, I'm just trying to do my best, and I don't have any, all the knowledge. I'm here to exchange information, and trust me, I gained a lot more than you gained from me. Yatikum al-afiyah. So thank you so much for attending, everyone. And I want to hear from you, like, if you enjoyed it, I want a very high clap, like very high <laughs> sound clap. And if not... <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing. So now I will invite you to stay for the brunch, and you are going to receive by email um, an ebook by Abdelaziz. So the book that you actually heard about, you're gonna receive it as a, as a return, a return Inshallah. gift. It's gonna reach your inbox. So uh, please stay for the brunch. You can have uh, networking, meet each other, and uh, also talk to our speaker. And if you have any other questions, any other comment, feel free to uh, approach me or approach yes, uh, Abdelaziz yes, yes. or the team. Yes. Okay, so thank you for coming and <laughs> we see you in a bit. <laughs> and since we talk about the book, I just want to give you a hint. Uh, the reason why I wrote the book is that I put all the leadership practices that I'm certified for, for example, whether it's situation leadership, whether it's seven habits, whether it's Dale Carnegie, how it comes to place in a practical way. So you see 70% of the book is not written by me, but the stories are mine. Uh, it's just uh, trying to help people because people approach me and tell me, I always uh, f follow Simon Sinek, or I only do seven habits. It doesn't work this way. 